Distributions that come pre-installed with window managers are actually fairly rare. The vast majority of distros that are out there all come with desktop environments. And those few that do come with window managers tend to focus on providing a lot of choice. So if you're going to go with something, say, like Arco Linux, you have, you're going to have a lot of choice of what window manager you have. Same thing with, like, Endeavor OS or Manjaro even. Like, you're going to have a lot of choice over what window manager is available. Even on something more conservative, like Fedora, you have options of a couple different window managers. If you look at the Ubuntu sphere of things, however, there really aren't that many distributions out there that offer a straight-up window manager experience, so you don't have a ton of choice there. So when I found that there was a Sway Window Manager remix of Ubuntu, I was kind of excited, but also I tried to temper my expectations because it is Ubuntu and me and Ubuntu don't always get along. So I've been checking out Ubuntu's Sway remix for a little bit now, and I have to say I'm very impressed. I'm like, I'm very impressed. I think that they should make this a flavor. I, that's how impressed I am. So today we're going to be taking a look at Ubuntu Sway Remix, and it's really, really good. Before we jump in, if you could leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It really does help the channel. So let's take a look at Sway Remix, and we'll start by talking about the installation. Now, this is not does not use the Ubiquity installer. It uses Calamari's. And the setup is very, very Calamari's. If you've ever used a Calamari's installer, you will know exactly what this one looks like. I'm, I'm going to show a little bit of B-roll here. And it just, it's a Calamari's installer. There's nothing special about it. The only thing I will say is that it does not give you an option for alternative file systems, like a lot of Calamari's installers do. So they haven't built that in yet. Hopefully that's something that they consider doing in the, in the future, because I'd like to see ButterFS be more prominent in pretty much everything. So that's just me. But... Other than that, it's a Calamari's installer. There's not really much to say with that. But once you've got it installed, you have a system that looks a little bit like this. Now, I am not someone who has spent a lot of time in Sway Window Manager. I personally am not interested in using Wayland all that much. To, to be just completely frank with you, I've talked about it on my channel many times. Wayland and I don't seem to get along. Mostly because of the content creation side of things where I have to ha have problems recording stuff. Also, I've never been that impressed with the bar situation on Wayland. So when I see this bar set up pre-configured for me, I'm pretty happy because first of all, it means I don't have to do the work, but also that is a sexy bar, guys. That is a very nicely put together bar. And the fact that it's there out of the box is really, really I mean, it's just really cool. It's very well done. And they've just done a fantastic job of just making it look nice. And the thing is that I'm used to configuring Polybar on Xorg, right? Uh, and on Xorg-based window managers. And getting rounded corners in a module is impossible to do. Uh, well, it's not impossible to do, but it requires a ton of, like, really weird adding extra modules in order to get half circles in there and stuff like that. It's not an easy thing to do, and it, it's very tedious. I don't know if this was as tedious as it looks, but I can't even imagine trying to do that on Polybar. It would take quite a while in order to do. So I'm really impressed with the bar. So that's just very first impression. The bar looks awesome. So but if we go to the actual desktop, one of the things that you have to do if you're going to ship a window manager distro right if, if you're going to you know if you're going to create a, a distro for qtile if you're going to create a distro for xmonad or whatever it doesn't really matter the one thing that you absolutely have to do is have something on the desktop that shows the default key bindings and they have that so they've checked that off the list and it's good and they've done a very good job of pri prioritizing the things that are important so the ones that are the most important are at the top so how do you kill a window super shift q how do you reload sway super shift super super shift c that was hard to say how do you exit sway super shift e those are the ones that are most important they're right at the top so good job there it's surprising how many window manager distro maintainers don't think to do this right a lot of them just assume that you're going to go splunking into the configuration file the very first thing and while that's probably true that doesn't mean that there shouldn't be some helpful hints there for someone who stumbles upon this distro and doesn't know what they're doing the fact that this is here, very good. 
So a few things you should know about the distro. It is based on Ubuntu. This is version 23.04, so it's the most recent version of Ubuntu. There are no snaps here, which is something that is really good. Also, probably will prevent them from being a flavor eventually. So there goes my dream with that, but still, it's fine. Uh, no snaps, which is personally like a, like is it good for me, but not good for their ambitions to be a flavor if, if they were had had those amb ambitions. So their stated mission for this project is in an attempt to provide a user-friendly desktop based on Sway, a popular tiling window manager using the modern Wayland graphics stack. Ubuntu Sway Remix is a great for both beginners who want to get familiar with the keyboard-oriented interface of tiling window managers and advanced GNU Linux users who want a powerful, user-friendly, minimalistic interface. Ubuntu Sway contains popular console-based applications and utilities along with graphical user interface applications to meet the needs of most users. So we're going to talk a little bit about the pre-installed applications here in a minute, but I will have to say is that a lot of times I judge these distros based on their website, and if I were to continue to do that, I'd say that this is one of the top tier ones. It's very, very nice. It's also simple enough uh, where I don't have to go splunking for the download. It's literally right there at the beginning. So. Uh, Super Shift Q to quit this. Now let's talk a little bit about the pre-installed applications. Now Super D gets us to what I'm assuming is a variation on Rofi. It's probably something like Tofi or Wofi or something like that. I'm not actually sure. Again, I'm not a Wayland expert, so I, one launcher kind of looks like the same to me. Um, the one thing that I found myself mightily impressed with is the uh, display settings thing. Now I don't know actually what this thing is, right? I've never seen it before in my life. It says it's called NWG displays. It is a revelation. Okay. I did not know this thing existed, but it's like a render, but better. Okay. So a render is a, uh, a application that you would use in a window manager on Xorg to manage your displays. This is kind of like that, but for Wayland. Now, normally on Wayland, when you'd want to try to change the display resolution, you have to do so through the terminal and it's very compositor specific. The fact that this exists and is installed is just two thumbs up from me. It's very, very good. And it was the first thing that I wanted to do. So I was I was actually kind of wondering how I was going to change the resolution because I'm in a virtual machine right now. And normally on Sway, you have to use the Sway terminal application in order to change the monitor display resolution. And I honestly couldn't remember what that was. I was going to have to look it up. But I got into the menu and saw that the display settings was right there at the top. And I was like, oh. Well, okay, that's pretty damn good. Okay, so past that, let's go ahead and actually uh, quit that. So you have Firefox as your web browser. You have Audacious for a music player. The Azote win wallpaper manager. So we can actually open that up and see if there's some wallpapers here. So th that's all the wallpapers they display, even if that's not the wallpaper that is included. So I'm assuming there's probably another folder somewhere that has the wallpapers. So they have PC Man FM as the file manager. They have a document scanner. These are all basic Ubuntu applications that sometimes comes comes installed. Uh, foot is the terminal. So this is foot right here. And they're running bash 5.2, even though it does look like they have fish installed. So they have fish installed. Yeah, so you could use fish if you wanted to. They have gparted here, GTK, with GTK settings. This looks like a fork of the xfce settings but for wayland so that's really interesting so you could change your wayland settings through here or your gtk settings through here they have Cavantum installed so you could change your qt applications LibreOffice is installed mate calculator mpv for for music music cube which is another music player so they have two different music players uh, neovim is installed by default which is nice also vim was installed either that it was alias 2 and vim i'm not sure about that cute browsers here pluma printers pulse audio uh, rangers installed rofi so this is rofi they have transmission and they do actually have Vim here as well. So Vim and NeoVim are both installed as the Thera for PDFs, and that's basically it. So let's take a look at the Welcome app. So this is this is pops up whenever you restart or when you install, I should say. And I have to say that it's not the best Welcome application ever, simply because it does keep the link for Run Calamari's once you have it installed. That probably should go away because uh, you can't install it a second time. That'd be really weird. But other than that, it's just a very basic Welcome application. I'm not actually sure what you get when you press next. Oh, you can change. It does have links for changing the color, the GTK scheme. You can 
change the color scheme. It doesn't appear to come with other color schemes. I looked at their theme directory. And it looked like it only had the one, which is a little bit of a shame because I would love for them to have different themes, but that's maybe something for them to work on in the past. Uh, you can change the shell from here, install software. So it does come with, uh, you know, I'm not actually sure what that is. What is this? It's called packages. What the fuck is that? It's called packages. I have no clue what that is. I've never heard of it before in my life. I'll be 100% honest with you. I've used GNOME for you know, off and on for years. I've never been a fan of it, but I've been in and out of GNOME and GTK land for a very long time. I've never heard of the, the application packages before. I've heard of GNOME, the GNOME store. I've heard, you know, I've seen Synaptic Package Manager. I've never heard of this before. That is, apparently it's been around for a very long time. Copyright 2007 to 2009, so it's been a package kit. i never heard of that before either. Um, apparently, I'm just an idiot or completely out of the loop. Um, but anyways, this is what you use to manage packages. So you could install packages from here. It reminds me a lot of uh, Pamac on Manjaro, to be honest with you. That's kind of cool. I had no clue that this was, this was a thing. I learned something new today. Honestly, Ubuntu probably should use, just use this. So that would have that that right there is your software store, which is again very reminiscent of Padmac. So there's that check for updates, and that just opens up the Ubuntu update checker. I believe that's what that is. So this is version 23.04. As I said, it's running kernel version 6.2, which is very up to date for an Ubuntu. It is not reporting the resolution correctly, but that's going to be a NeoFetch problem, not anything to do with Sway, uh, Sway itself. It's using about a gigabyte of memory, even though I think I have, I don't have a browser open, so that's actually not too bad. Uh, we'll see what it looks like when we use free-m, about 1200 at the, at the moment, so that's not too bad. So, as, as I said, it's using 6.2, that's a generic Ubuntu kernel. So I guess all that's left is to talk about the configuration file. And honestly, the configuration file is where I'm a little bit disappointed. So the look and feel is good. The included applications, I think, is spectacular. They've done a really good job of putting this thing together. But it all comes down to the configuration file. And while I'm still very impressed with this, the configuration file is a bit of a letdown. So the one thing that it, about Swear that you should know is that it's supposed to be one-to-one -one compatible with i3's configuration file. And the idea here is that you're able to take all of your i3 stuff and all of your i3 knowledge and know-how and put it towards your Sway configuration file if you choose to do so. It doesn't mean that you have to. There are Sway way of doing things, I, sh I sh should say. You can do things in a different way, but the idea is that you can go from one to another and be very, very comfortable. Now, maybe that's not their audience for this, but for me personally, I'm much more familiar with i3 than I ever have been with Sway. Now, if you take a look at their configuration file for this particular version of Sway Window Manager, it's not as user-friendly as I would have hoped. Now, I've spent some time trying to find all of the things that you're supposed to be able to change and stuff like that. So, uh, if, if you were to just look at this right here, and you didn't know anything else. You just knew the bare minimum. You like you know there's a configuration file. You knew how to find the configuration file, but you didn't know anything else. Where would you say the key bindings are, right? If you wanted to make a change to the key binding, let's just say you wanted to change from Super Shift Q to, to Super Q, which is something that I want to do. Where would I find it? And the answer to that question is I still don't know. So this one here is going to be for the theme. So that's going to be just colors. This one here is seems to be where most of the key bindings and stuff are, but there, it's also done with secondary variables that are defined somewhere else. I, I don't know where they're defined yet. I still haven't found them. So there are some very, some key bindings set here. So you see bind sim some places, but it's not all the key bindings. And some of them are, so the key bindings are set as variables that are defined where still not sure. So, this seems to be the fi the file where most of the key bindings are at, but again, it's not done in such a way that it's easy to just, you know, I want to go change the key binding for PC Man FM, or I want to go change the key binding for, you know, opening Firefox. Where are those actually set? And the answer to that question remains a mystery. So these are the user variables. If you go here, that's just an empty file with some readme. So you actually have to create that file your, yourself. Those, if you were to create variables inside of that directory, that would override the global variables. If we go to the outputs here, that's just going to define the default screen. If we go to the inputs here, so that's going to define the default keyboard. 
and default gestures and stuff. If we go to modes, I'm gonna I'm just gonna take a fly in the dark. This defines some modes. So this is the default mode. Oh, hold on a second. See, I went, I didn't even think to look inside the modes for the key bindings. There we go, right there. Those are the key bindings. All right, so we can actually change this to the thing that I wanted to change it to. Okay, so there we go. <laughs> all right, so as you can see, you have to explore all of those files in order to actually find the things that you're looking for. And I had skipped over the modes previously and didn't think, even think to look for there for the, the key bindings, which now that I think about it, it kind of makes sense because this is the default mode. That's where you'd find all the key bindings for this particular mode. And then you have another mode, which in another mode and key bindings for those modes would be defined there. So I've always been a big fan of switching out and sourcing files inside of a configuration file because it makes things neater. But the way they've done this thing here is just so super complicated. And even now that I've found this, I can't actually edit it, right? Uh, so I went from one file to another without pseudo privileges. And if you noticed, when I did that, I was just in my regular home directory. And then if I go here back to modes, you see where this is stored? It's stored in Etsy Sway modes, which means in order to actually edit that file, I have to have pseudo privileges. Okay, now I know what they want you to do is actually to go up here to the, the user variables and probably set things there. So that means that if you wanted to set a key binding or a variable, you'd set it in, in that file, which would override the global ones. And that's what they want you to do. But that is just so super unnecessarily complicated. Okay, this is not a proper way of doing a configuration file for anybody, whether you've been using it for a long time or you're brand new. And especially if you're trying to draw in people who are new to window managers, this is definitely not a proper way of doing it. I, okay, I shouldn't say it. it's not a, it's not a good way of doing it. it. It's proper. You can do it, but it doesn't feel good and it doesn't make intuitive sense for a lot of people, especially storing a lot of stuff outside of the user directory where you have to worry about things getting overwritten when it comes to updates and stuff like that. All the stuff should be in the user directory where it could be easily edited if people wanted to edit it. Now... There's going to be the alternative side to that that, you know, maybe they don't want people to mess with the default configuration files and, you know, in case they don't know what they're doing. You're, so you're protecting the people from their own, uh, you know, ignorance or whatever. That's possible, I suppose. But I don't as someone who's used window managers for a long time, I don't care for the, the, the configuration file of this all that much. And not necessarily the way the, the configuration file itself, just the way they've set it up. It does feel very unintuitive to me and I don't really care for it all that much. So. That is the Sway remix of Ubuntu. I'm very actually kind of impressed. The, the, the configuration file stuff aside, everything else just is very, very nice. And I really do like it quite a lot. They've done a good job of theming it. They've done a good job of choosing packages that make sense. And it's just overall a very good experience. And I'm probably going to keep it installed as one of my window managers or as one of my virtual machines. And just, I'm just going to use it for a little while because I'm very... I haven't spent a lot of time in Sway, and I probably should. Maybe that configuration method is the way Sway does it by default now. I don't know. It's not the way they used to do it. It used to be just say dot config slash Sway and then a config file on there. And uh, as far as I know, that's the way they still do it, but maybe they've changed. So that is the Sway Remix. If you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't already, leave a thumbs up on this video. It really does help the channel. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Links for PayPal and YouTube will be in the video description as well if you'd rather support me there. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. Support. I truly do appreciate it. Again, just thank you so very much. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.